How did your hump day go? It's Wednesday, February 9th. I'm John Zadar, and this is On Top and Hot, where I go out and I look at OTC and penny stocks, send some trading OTC anyways, and then I bring back a few that look good to me and I share them with you. And today I found three stocks that were moving on the market, but have made some big changes. And I think those changes can bring on some repercussionary gains down the road. So I'm gonna show you what I found and see what you think. Come on. No need to guess where we're at. Right, we're over here at the otcmarkets.com website. I always start my due diligence here. Why? Right, it's always current. Never outdated. FINRA and the SEC update this every single day. All 12,000 plus securities. Oops, we're down to 11,007 now. <laughs> They've pulled a bunch more off the market. Boy, I didn't realize that. Anyways, this is where you get the facts, so this is where I come. Why waste my time running around on Google sorting through all that old information? So the first one we're taking a look at here is Vapor, V-A-P-R, Vapor Brands International. Finished the day at 0.0132, 67% gains today. Pink tier, current, has a transfer agent verified, no verified profile, would like to see one, but I've not seen that hurt anybody yet. They're a shell company. Shell company means that they've told everybody they're not doing anything right now. They're not making any money. They're waiting for some sort of change to happen before they do. So it's all kosher. Well, change is here. It's finally happened. Now, this description is what they used to do, as you're going to see in the news. They used to be into cannabis, CBD, hemp, all that green stuff, but they're not. Nope, that is overdone in the history books, we're not gonna go back to it. So there is news today, it's been the first piece of news in a while, and it gives us an entirely new direction. And it's a bit interesting, it's the first one I've ever seen. So there was relative volume to talk about. She had 44,000 shares sold yesterday, and the 29 days before it roughly. Today she did 13 million. That is 300 times her normal volume on this one piece of news. Aren't you glad I'm gonna share it with you? What is their share structure? All right, now I did do some searching here. We have nothing under the unrestricted shares, which is normally where I get the float. You can pretty much count on that being as close as you're gonna get, if not exact. We don't have that, and I went looking and I couldn't find it. What I do see here is you have a float of 46 million. This is back in what? Well, back last year. And then you've got 64 million being held here at the DTC. I'm just going to take a stab in the dark and just guess. I could be wrong here, but I'm going to add both of those together. I'm going to add that up and say there's probably about 110, 120 million shares in the float, which could be right. There's 228 million outstanding. I wouldn't exactly expect a low float on a company that's basically coming out of the dark, right? So not a low float. We'll just stick with that average amount of shares. Financials, well, they're a shell company. No need to look at that. And they haven't had anything happen until just now. And that's really in the news. So when you look at the news, you can see the very last piece of news mentioned CBD oil. That was back in May of last year. And there's no more news. But that's how recent that was. Just last May, you're talking, what, nine, maybe 10 months ago, they were still involved in CBD oil. And then it just went silent. We, we had nothing. Matter of fact, the only piece of news we had is what has been brought in from online. This came from Access Wire. I wouldn't have known about this news had it not been here. VAPR, Vapor, acquires eSight Motors, an EV auto manufacturer with a key advantage over others. I'll say, new corporate direction. So what we learn over here is that Vapor Brands International acquired 100% of eSight Motors. They're an innovative electric vehicle manufacturer startup. <laughs> I know, you're going great. One more electric car maker. Woo, just what we need. Actually, they're not your typical electric car maker. They're different. Definitely different. Uh, Vapor put all its effort towards the eSight Motors activities and has ceased 
all vape or CBD related activities. In anticipation of this opportunity to continue to develop Eastside's unique offerings of complete turnkey road legal vehicles, Vapor intends to change its name to one that's more fitting. So that makes sense. Now, this is interesting. This first line, right? Unlike competitors, Tesla, Polestar, Lucid, those are electric cars. VW, Ford, Jaguar, why are they mentioning them? And others. Eastsight is not required to meet any of the safety or other costly certifications of traditional auto manufacturers making the ease of the timeline of offering these new vehicles much quicker. That's right. First off, they don't have to obey all the safety rules involved with big car manufacturers. I'll get to that in a minute. And because of that, it's going to allow them to make the cars quicker and they can get them out in one year instead of three years. Now, why don't they have to obey the safety rules? Well, in a word, kit car. No, I'm not talking about Knight Rider, the talking car. I'm talking about kit cars where you actually take the frame of one car, put in a motor of another car, and you put on a body of another car. That's what they're going to be making. They go on to tell us here that this is all possible because Eastside's vehicle qualifies under the Low Volume Vehicle Manufacturer Act of 2015. And I went and read this. Now, they did pass this back in 2015, and they had one year to get it going. So that companies that didn't make more than, and you're not going to find it here, but you'll find it in the bill. Any company that makes less than 5,000 cars a year does not have to meet the safety requirements the big manufacturers have to do. I know, strange, right? But of course, they still have to meet the emission concerns, which is where they really get ahead here. Now, it was only last year in January that they finally got this Low Volume Vehicle Manufacturers Act done. It finally got started, and there was only two things that they had to worry about, and both of them were wiped out. Under the CAR Act, manufacturers are exempt from all safety standards, but they must meet current emission standards. However, there are no emissions for electric vehicles. There are no emissions, so they don't have to worry about any of that. That is going to make things much easier and smoother for them. They tell us here that Eastsight Motors has developed a modular design that will be engineered to allow the production of vehicles utilizing a skateboard style chassis that uses hub electric motors. You know, you're just going to put each wheel is going to have a motor on it rather than an engine going inside. And they can put anybody on there and they say they can make these small cars with just a little 100 horsepower engine or they can make it an all-wheel drive with big 250 horsepower engines you know engines when i'm talking about engines i mean the things on the wheels so they can make anything they want now there are a key a few key facts that you need to understand the 2015 act says that the cars must be at least 25 years old Right. So these are going to be replicas. They're not going to be brand new designs. They're going to be something from at least 25 years ago. They have to be a classic. So I don't know if it'll be a 1967 Mustang that's electric or what, but any of those cars they can use. And as I said, they can't do more than 5,000. Now in saying that, in all honesty, how much money can you make selling only 5,000 cars a year? Now, they don't plan on these being expensive cars. They want these to be just your moderately family cars. So how much are they going to sell them for? So I don't know if they're going to have a hundred subsidiaries, each making a Mustang, a Vega, uh, a Gremlin. I don't know, but each one will have 5,000 cars so that each one is their own entity. I don't know what they're going to do, folks. I'm scratching my head, actually, trying to figure out how this is going to make big revenues if they have a ceiling for what they're allowed to sell. Hmm. In any case, it did run today. 67%. Was that 65 when we looked at it? So let's go look at that chart and see if it was 65%.
That is VAPR, a one day, one year chart. And that's think or swim. If you don't have a trading platform, you definitely need one. This one is free. Just go over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for a free account. It's easy. You don't have to give them any money. You don't even have to trade with them. I do, but you don't have to. Just keep your account open and you can use think or swim just like I do. So as I said, this is a one year chart. I was just curious to see what it looked like this far back. I see she was coming out of a heavy, heavy push, hit 2.7 cents all the way back there. And we had a low here of 0041 and are currently at 1.3 cents. This right about here, right there is the last news press we had. So everything forward was basically a cone of silence, if you will, all the way until today's first news press. And I got to say, she held on pretty good for not getting any news. But I guess people are used to a few months maybe without news. But this became detrimental. You go past three, four months, people say, nope, something's wrong. CEO's not talking to us. And it fell hard. Let's come in on that four hour just to see where the 200 lies. All right, we are here in uh, July and we got through the 200. We even got through it here in the cone of silence. Very interesting. But after that, she's just had no hope. She's fallen all the way down and everything on this one piece of news is pumping up. You can bump me up. Let's come down to the 20 day, one hour. All right, you can see how flat she really, really is. In the cone of silence, there's just nothing going on. She's under the 50, way under it. And this is very interesting. This is the ninth. This is the news jump and fall. See, we ended up with 67%. It was much higher than that. Matter of fact, where did it go? We went from about 0077 up to two cents. Goodness gracious. So think of that as like seven and a half cents to 20 cents. So you're about 250, 260%. That's what that would have been. And then it fell all the way back and we only got stuck with 67%. Wow, she gave up a lot. But as I was saying, why did this rise? Why did it rise yesterday without any news, without anybody knowing anything? Or did they know something? This possibly could be a filing. I say it often, folks. 8Ks, S1s, these all come out before news presses normally. Normally. They could come out exactly the same time, but I'll tell you what you won't see. You won't see a news press before a filing comes out. Just won't happen. So I'm going to guess that some people, because not everybody reads filings, I'm telling you that's where the gold's at. Some people read the filing, everybody read the news. So we had a jump from about there up to there and looking for the center right about there. So she fell below the 50. Now, I don't know if people are figuring out 5,000 cars isn't enough, but they didn't say 5,000 cars in that news press, did they? No, they did not. I found that because I went and read the bill for the 2015 electric, well, uh, low volume manufacturing. I went and read it and it says you have to do 5,000 or less vehicles a year. So I'm aware of that. I don't think most people are. They will be now. <laughs> but in either case, it is something new. We don't know where they're going to go with it. It is a start. It is a change. It had some excitement today and it could have another pop. Remember, we're not always looking at these for long runners. We're not looking at them for investments. We're looking at them to get in, get out after we've made some money. So this has fallen. It is seemingly right on the 10 right now. And that is on the one hour. Let's come down to the five day, five minute. All right, now this lays out a little bit better for us. You can see that was a strong growth in the morning. That ended at, uh, oh, 10 minutes after 10. Now, if I play a morning bounce, if I was aware this was gonna run and I got lucky to get in, I would ride this up no later than 10, 10, 05, and I'm out. Because I've noticed most of the OTC market dips at 10, 10, 05. I missed this by five minutes, but look folks, it took the dip. That's why I get out. And even if it continues running, if I make a habit of getting out before it dips, I guarantee you more go down and don't come back up 
then continue going on. So if I'm always looking for the ceiling, I'm gonna get robbed up here over and over and over again. But if I get used to taking a 9.50 at uh, 9.55 o'clock <laughs> uh, payout, man, I can have those over and over again because the market doesn't dip until about 10 o'clock. So that is my strategy in most cases, and it would have worked here. So she has come down, she broke the 50, 50 day surge mark that I like to put in. You can see she tried to hang around it. She tried to hang around that for a while, came down and landed on the 50 day, tried to hang on to that, started to slip away and she's reaching back up for it. Now, if she's reaching back up for the 50 day, she may reach back up for this. But again, that was a catalyst in the dark. We hadn't had anything in a very long time and people were excited. Even though it was a change, it was something. Thank God for something. So maybe there'll be some more excitement. Not everybody got to see it today. Some will see it tonight. We'll have to see. I'll tell you right now though, looking at the five minute chart, our MACD was underneath, looking sad all day. But right there, folks, right there, she is crossing over and you can see the first screen. You can see we are starting a push up and the price was pushing up. Not a lot of volume. I'm not saying this is gonna be a morning runner. I'm just saying it's probably not done. Keep your eye on it. And if you decide that you wanna get into it, I would probably wait to see if it comes down to here. I would, I know it's pushing up, but it may tag this and come back down. It may come down to this point right here. That's just a feeling because it broke my 50 day mark, but she's at that struggle point right now. Flip a coin, we'll see. Now we're gonna take a look at Galaxy Next Generations, ticker G-A-X-Y-D. Now that's a temporary ticker. You see that D on the end there? That tells us that there's a corporate change going on right now. Could be a ticker change, a name change, share structure change, something. And when it's done, that D will fall away. And it'll be just as it was or the new ticker will be up, whatever the case is. So there was news today and they are doing something right now. As a matter of fact, it's already been done and I'm not very happy about it. But in either case, the company finished at 52 cents, 61% up today. They are on the middle tier of the OTC market. We call that the better tier, the QB. It's better because they audit their financials. That makes them trustworthy. Did you know that pink companies do not have to audit their financials? Mm -mm. They can give us any numbers they want and we just gotta take their word for it. Now they do have a lawyer look at it and he writes a letter and sends that in, but he's not held accountable. He says, yeah, it looks good to me, but I'm not a CPA. So due diligence is important. And I'm not talking about the company. I'm talking about the management because they're the ones that come up with the numbers. If you're going to trust the number, you better trust the man. So this company has a verified profile, but I do not see a verified transfer agent here. And I would like to see that. So hopefully they get that done taken care of soon. Now, what does this company do? Well, they tell us that we are a manufacturer and distributor of interactive learning technologies and enhanced audio solutions. We develop both hardware and software that allows the presenter and the participant to engage in a fully collaborative instructional environment. Now, I've been going through their news here recently for the last three to four months, and I don't see anything about education. None of that has really come up. So they may and probably are doing that, but what they've got now are a couple products that are really doing well, and they have to do with school safety. They're dealing with the elementary, middle school, high schools, and colleges. Now, like I said, there was news today. It was good news. So their relative volume should be strong. And this is the other thing you run into when you have a D on the back end of your ticker. Because things are changing, you don't always get all the information. They have to change things and update it. So we don't know what her average share count is. Today, they did 389,000 shares, which doesn't sound like very much to me at all, but that's what it was. What is her share structure? Okay, again, we got no information, and I know why this is. The share structure is what changed with this company. Though there's nothing here, if you're suspect and think there may have been a split, you can come down here to dividends and splits and hit splits. Ta-da, yesterday. 
2022, there was a reverse split of one and 200. One and 200, folks. I did some research and I found out that this company had a float of 3.9 billion shares. 3.9 billion. And they divided that by 200. And what does that come out to? Just under 17 million shares. That's what their float is now. Can you imagine that? It went from 3.9 billion in the float to 17 million. It's a low float stock now. But I hold this stock. So my 10,000 shares are now 50 shares and I'm a little upset because you took all my potential. It is not a good thing. But they did this for a variety of reasons and we're gonna touch on to that here. All right, their financials, I don't think you're gonna see anything over here, <laughs> but let's go take a look. Surprise, surprise, surprise. We actually do have some numbers over here and they're pretty decent numbers actually. We gotta take the three zeros here put them behind here so we're talking millions two one two three point seven million dollars in those years so let's look at it quarterly nine hundred and four thousand dollars but goodness gracious look at the cost of that revenue that cost them eight hundred and forty eight thousand dollars they only got to keep fifty five thousand dollars out of almost a million dollars holy goodness I hope these other products are cheaper to make than whatever they've been doing gracious and their disclosures let's see if we have anything new over here that is september of 2021 and there is the reverse split i know what that is so let's go take a look at that news so this news as i said i went all the way back to november and taking a look here at these two you can see here in november they reported the highest quarterly revenue in company history with 43% growth to $1.7 million revenue. That is two consecutive quarters in a row that they've made gains. Then you go all the way up here to February, they report 31% revenue growth. Now they're at $2.6 million and they have reduced their operating expenses and their net losses for the last six months. So. They are making more money. They're bringing down expenses. They're going in the right direction. Thank goodness for that. Now, I told you they've got new products. Here in December, they won an award for their G2 Secure. That is one of their products. They won an award for Campus Technology New Product. And what this basically is, it's for the staff of the school. If anything goes wrong with one touch of a button, they can lock all the doors, they can notify first responders, they can announce, make an announcement over the entire school. So that is a safety thing that they've got and they got an award for that. And then here in January, they launch another product called G2 Link. Now, do you remember, <laughs> some of you do, some of you don't, in the schools I went to, they had an intercom up on the wall and the principal would talk to us and you know, every classroom could hear it. And if they called somebody, sometimes the classroom would actually have an intercom in it and you'd have to push a button and you could talk back. Well, what this is, is something the teacher wears and it has these buttons on it so that they can talk to the front office anytime, they can talk to their classroom outside the walls, inside the walls. It gives them communication abilities at all times. So that is the new product that they kicked off. Then today, today we got two pieces of news. You have the reverse split, which I told you about, and you have that they were awarded $230,000 from two schools in Texas for their products down here. Now I wanna zoom in on this shareholder letter. Now, this gives us insight to why they did the reverse split and it really is necessary. And this is gonna teach you a lot. Reverse splits have a lot of purposes. There's a lot of reasons why you might do them. <laughs> and this company hit everyone on the head. We would like to be transparent as possible with you about yesterday's reverse stock split and recapitalization of our share structure. The company has experienced growth in revenue products, employees, and all around industry recognition over the past year or so. Our lenders converted their loans into stock, which in return had a negative effect on both our share structure and our share price. 
When they turned them over, millions and millions of shares got thrown onto the market. However, without those loans and equity raised, we would not have been in a position of growth which has been represented over the past two quarters. It was a necessary evil, it was just kind of bound to happen. The company has positioned itself to be an industry leader in both classroom audio products and with school safety and security equipment and software. Because of all this, we felt it was the appropriate time to fix the share structure. See, you don't want to be a subpenny stock, which is what they're really worried about. The reverse stock split and getting out of the subpenny land benefits our business. We have fought hard to maintain a high level of integrity on the OTC QB market and to maintain our QB status. There was a need to have a minimum price of a penny. On the QB, you have to stay at a penny. If you go under a penny, you're in trouble. And they got three warnings because they couldn't get above a penny. And it probably isn't their fault. Market sentiment is Shinola. It's not real good. Good companies are going down. It's a great buying opportunity right now if you have any powder. So between the warnings and being threatened to be yanked off the QB and thrown back down to the pink, and believe me you, it cost them money to get up onto the QB. They did not want to go through that again. So to save themselves from being thrown back down to the pink, to take care of the share structure since it got so huge, and to lift them up to a better price. 52 cents looks a heck of a lot better than 0 .003, right? And people will take the company more seriously now. So that is the trade-off. I got less shares, but probably more respect. All right, let's go take a look at that chart and see what sort of respect it's getting. Very interesting. This is GAXYD. And no, that is not a six month, four hour chart. I couldn't show it one to you if I wanted to. All we have are two days, yesterday and today. There is no more chart. Now, yes, yes, they have been trading. They have not been pulled off the market. This is all because of the split. What they're doing is adjusting the chart to represent the price change. And you're saying, what are you talking about? It is what it is. That's what you'd think, right? I would presume that the chart would just show the price and then have this big jump when they did their split, when the price got kicked up and just continue going. That's not what they do. They adjust all the history of the company's trading. So if you go back a month from now when it closed at 003, it's going to be 200 times more. I think that's uh, 60 cents, 6 cents, I don't know. Whatever it is, it's going to be that new price. Yeah, they're going to change the history. I don't know why they do that, but they do. So there is no chart to look at but two days. So I don't know what the price was before it jumped. I don't have a clue. I know it was 200 times less than what it opened up at. Now, I don't even know what it really opened up at because I can see this as pre-market after market. There was obviously some activity during that. But it was down to a low of 30 cents, went up to 90 cents, that's 300% gains, and then gave it all away and fell low. Now, I'm surprised she didn't go lower. A reverse split on the OTC market can have detrimental effects. You don't get the benefit of new buyers. When you uplist to get to the NASDAQ, you've got institutions, hedge funds, whales. You've got this whole new group of investors looking at your stock. When you do a reverse split here, you may make yourself look better by having a better price, but the buyers are still the same. And all they see is a more expensive stock. So I don't know that it actually does a lot of good down here. But what is interesting is that today it started to climb. Now normally I see stocks after reverse split fall for days. I sure do. This is already starting to climb. And without any history, without any supports, without any SMAs, I don't even have an RSI down here. I really can't give you a lot of information except to say climbing after a reverse split is unusual. And I can see today we had a lot of volume. What What is this? Well, 395,000 shares is what they said. So that's 58,000. That's 70,000. Okay. So we're still at low volume. I think when they start giving us more news, this will start to recover. I think there's a little shock because of the reverse split. And maybe, 
maybe they're right. Maybe this will bring in new investors who see the stock. I mean, they wouldn't even look at it before. Wouldn't even look at a double zero. Now, at least it's in the pennies. They might just look at it. So the last company we're taking a look at is URYL, United Royale. Finished today at 59 cents, just a smidge over, and 96%. Actually, just a smidge under. <laughs> they are on the middle tier as well, the QB, so all of their financials are audited. They're trustworthy. They are transparent. They've got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. Nice to see somebody with both. They've also got independent directors. They use these when they uplisted to the QB, and if they have plans to go to the NASDAQ, they're going to need them again. Now, they are reported to be a shell risk. This means they are not reporting any revenues. And I looked. They're not making any money. And it's not surprising because it's been quiet for quite a while. So what's the company up to now? Well, they've made some changes. That's what this is all about, right? Companies going through changes. United Royale Holdings Corp has changed its name to True North Quantum Inc. Pending approval. True North Quantum is a creator of the Northern Shield, an innovative, scalable, institutional grade cloud platform that enables the rapid build and scale of decentralized applications across multiple industries. They are going to be working in applications of health tech, med tech, fintech, and ag tech. What we're talking about here is the blockchain. Their cloud is going to work with blockchain so that they can work with cryptocurrency. But what is it exactly that they do? Well, they're going to be instrumental in working with the banks so that banks can connect your crypto assets to your banking account. They will be given license to hold it and there will be insurance to keep it safe. They've got this all in place. And the fact of the matter is, is that most of this was actually done and closed back in October. If you jump to their disclosure, any company's disclosure, 10K, 10Q, you can see what the company does. Just put in description of business and search it out. It'll come up and you can get all the information on the company in chronological order. Look at that, September, March, April. How easy is that to do DD? And we see down here, October 4th, the company amended its articles of incorporation to change its name to True North Quantum Inc. That was back in October. In that same month, we read the company closed its acquisition of True North Quantum Inc. Kind of interesting because actually the news today says it was closed. So I don't know what's going on here. Now, to give you a better idea of what the company is doing, Northern Shield enables banks to institutionalize cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin were originally designed to be decentralized currency. However, the Northern Shield will provide the vehicle for integration to applications and utility for the digital wallets inbound and outbound. North Shield is a custody solution with insurance. Currently, crypto holders have an account at the crypto exchange where they invested in that cryptocurrency. Our solution enables major banks to possess custody on behalf of their clients, providing flexibility to trade on multiple exchanges with access to financial and payment networks in a secure and insured account. And that's what it's all about. They're moving this crypto game into the bigger leagues. They're just getting the institutions involved. And I'm not quite sure if I like banks hanging on to it, but a lot of people probably will be. So it looks like everything is really done. They're just waiting to move forward. I don't see the name is actually changed here, but we did see it was done in the disclosure. So what was the relative volume around this company today? And I think it's worthy of noting that there was no news today. I am looking at this stock because it's running with 100% gains when most of the market was really getting beat down today. It seems to me something is going on. I looked at Twitter. I couldn't find anything. I've looked at the filings. I can't find anything. I've looked at the news and the news tells us of something that's happened just here recently, a couple months ago, and something should be coming out of it. So maybe somebody knows something, you know, like that last one we looked at that had a little bit of jump before it jumped. I think something's going on here. So we've got 70 times her normal volume here, 70 times at seven thousand percent increase in volume now it's not a big number we're only in the thousands not millions but seven thousand percent increase is something to take notice of 
What is their share structure? Well, how about that too? We got a low float. Now it's not super low, but come on, 17.5 million is a low float. Now we know the financials are gonna show us nothing, not for the annual, not for the quarterly. So we got nothing going there. Disclosures, there's just nothing going on right now. So if we look at the news, you can see that it goes back to 2018 and up to 2021. All they have are two pieces of news here in the last year and a half, and both of them had to do with True North Quantum. Their intent back in July, and then they tell us about the acquisition right after it happens in November, and that's it. It's gone silent, folks. We're not getting any tweets, we're not getting any news, but you've got a new company here that has a product that is going to be working with cloud, which is hot, the blockchain, which is hot, FinTech, which is hot, and they're involving the banks. It all sounds pretty big to me, and it had a hundred, well, almost a hundred percent gains today. So let's go take a look at that chart and see if it looks like it has some probability, if it looks like it's on a rise that we can ride with. Back to a six month, four hour look. This is URYL. And you can see we had a huge jump here at $2.48 and it has fallen down to 21 cents. Currently we're just about 60 cents. Now remember, we only had two pieces of news last year, one in July and one in November. This jump here happened, and I'm talking about right there, that is November 10th. Now the news came out November 1, November 1. That's November 1 right there. Sure doesn't look like an acquisition piece of news came out, does it? We had a bump here on the 5th, I don't know why, and then one on the 10th. And this one climbed and climbed and climbed until, what date is that? The 18th. So you had eight days of climbing here from uh, 50, 50 cents to $2.50. So you had a 500% gain in eight days. And this was way after the news. So that's what I'm looking at over here. We haven't had any news, but we have had everything done. Watch that name change. Watch that name change come up here anytime because something has got this thing, I don't want to call it spooked, but it's definitely got it jumping. Let's take a look at that 20 day, one hour look. She's riding on the 50 down back up down back up and what are these bounces for goodness sake remember she's got a low float we're at 20 cents and then it bounces up the next day to 54 cents you're getting 150 percent 140 percent bounces out of these things folks look at this every other day it opens up high it falls it opens up high it falls more often than not so you can see that she loves to bounce with this low float. So she has been riding that 50 across the hard way, up and down, and today was a normal. Today was a normal climb without the erratic bouncing. Even that one is a little hard. I mean, those are some big jumps. These are nice little easy climbs going up, which says people are investing here, there, here, there. There's not excitement, there's logic. So we see we've got a lot of volume today, even though it's a little volume, it's a lot of volume. And we have the MACD, she did a crossover yesterday and a hard bounce, hard bounce, and is pushing up nicely. RSI is just under the 60 and pushing up. Now again, I don't have a catalyst for you, except that she's had an acquisition in November, her name change should be popping up any time now, and their business is probably happening. They're probably doing stuff right now. We just have no clue what it is. So maybe somebody knows a PR is coming out. Maybe somebody knows something we don't. I don't know how many. That's not a lot of shares. It wouldn't take a lot of people to make that happen. And you would buy in subtly not to draw any attention. Just a feeling I have trading. Up to you to decide. You know, even when you're digging for gold, you get a backache. Yeah, you could have a pocket full of cash, but your back is killing you. Sometimes DD is some hard work. You just can't find what you're looking for, and it's very difficult. But you can always trust the charts. We couldn't trust that second one, could we? And after they change all the history after a split, you can't trust that really, can you? Okay, a little bit of fool's gold out there too. But in either case, 
There is real gold to be found and it's worth working for, even if it hurts sometimes. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you are going to grow. See ya.